This episode is brought to you ad-free thanks to all of our wonderful patrons. You can help us keep the show going by joining at patreon.com slash shonenflop. And welcome to this episode of Shonen Flop, where we talk about manga and shonen jump that didn't make it big. I'm David. I'm Jordan. Next week, we're going to be covering tricks dedicated to witches. If you'd like to read along with us, be sure to join the discussion in our Discord and submit your six-word summary. Find a link to the Discord in our episode description and on our website, shonenflop.com. But this week, we are talking about Tista, and we are joined by our guest, the wonderful Terrence. It's me! I'm here! Hello! I've joined the show! I complimented your voice in the warm-up audio. I'm going to just say it again because I want it on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard a voice this great since Dylan. Hello. Oh, man. I don't know who Dylan is, but I'll take it as a compliment. Damn, that's uh, some high praise. Dylan is our editor with a sexy voice. Mm. Dylan, say so- Dylan, say something sexy right here. Hey, honey, don't worry about the laundry. I took care of it. <laughs> I remember I was like, I don't know how to describe Dylan's voice other than sexy. And Jordan's like, you just call it sexy, brother. That's just, it's just a fact, <laughs> man. You know what I mean when you hear it? Soft and velvety. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to our best of the year episode, The Floppies, but the person who did all of the award readings, that was Dylan, if you happen to listen to that episode. And then I did the second award readings because yeah. I couldn't help myself. I just... <laughs> Somehow podcasters love the sound of their own voice. It's crazy. Weird. It's just fun to do the voices. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, whatever. All right, but it's also fun to hear about our guests. So, Terrence, you mind telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, you might know me from Twitter as the Black Nerd, uh, where I have a lot of thoughts and opinions all the time. But also, I'm a baker, photographer, Whoa. writer. I've been featured on, like, IGN and Paste and oh, shit. Sandbite. I do a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm a professional photographer. Really? Yeah, I take pictures of rare coins. Oh, I do some hobby photography. We actually have a dedicated photography. If you ever want to post any of your photos there, I'd love to see it. Ooh, I've been trying to get back into doing uh, regular photography outside of work. So that would be cool. Definitely when we're uploading, I I just bought like a new camera set up last year. So definitely happy to nerd out about that. I do actually think that I first heard about you from the cookie Mm -hmm. recipe. My fiance bakes and I cook. Mm -hmm. Just because I, I I think baking is just so precise, like, you know, yeah. and it's just really struggle, but definitely I really enjoy a cookbook, so definitely want to give it a shot next time I actually bake some I've cookbook. heard uh, many people have told me they are easy to follow recipes, so. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. Hey, that's not easy. A lot of people <laughs> screw that up. I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, just like um, the how to make manga book that this author read, <laughs> that author screwed it up, uh-huh. clearly. <laughs> We will definitely dive in, but I'll ask you one question. If you could send a copy of one of your recipes to everyone on the planet, which one would you pick? Probably be the best chocolate chip cookies ever. My man. It was the most recent recipe that I came up with. And like, it's the first one where I'm just like, oh no, this is something dangerous that I've made. You're like um, Oppenheimer creating the bomb. Yeah. Just being like, oh, what have I done? My dad told me to stop making them because he liked them so much. He was like, if you keep (laughs) making these, I'm going to eat them. I mean, they are apparently the best chocolate chip cookies ever. Are we able to include a link to it in the show notes, or is that one of the paywall? It's one of the free ones. Oh, Ooh. perfect. Okay, so, well, definitely, if you Damn. can send me a link to it, I'll put that in the show notes. Okay, I will do that. You're giving away the best chocolate chip cookie ever? Right. Like, for free? It's like insolent, Jordan. He had to give it to humanity after it was invented. Yeah, it was, yeah. I was just like, I was like, I can't keep this behind the paywall. This is... My penicillin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't have a good transition. Let's get into talking about the yeah. manga. Well, Tista. Sorry, I can't connect cookies to this manga. <laughs> Maybe Tista like would have turned out better if only she'd had <laughs> the cookies. That's true. The best chocolate chip cookies ever. Oh, actually, you know where they make really good cookies? New York City. New York City, baby. New Let's York get into talking about City. this New York City manga. New York. This is such a New York manga. This really was in New York. Anyway. So to get into the manga details, this manga was created by Endu Tatsuya, who was the an assistant to our favorite manga offer of all time. <gasps> or one of them. Sorry, one of our favorites. Let's not be hyper. Tatsuki Fujimoto. Who? Yes, the Chajimoto himself. I've read all of uh, Chainsaw Man and there are yes! I have, uh, two Pochita. I have a figure that my friend made and 3D printed. <gasps> Let me see if I can uh, get a picture of it real quick and send it to you. But I did, I did <laughs> read all of Chainsaw Man. And I am all caught up on Chainsaw Man. Good. But I have a I have a Pochita plush and a Pochita figure that my uh, that my friend made for me. 
I love it. And yeah, it's it's good. Jordan actually got me a so I just got a puppy like literally a week ago and Jordan sent me a Pachita puppy costume for it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's somewhere if you go into the pet pictures, if you scroll up, you'll see it. I love it. How is Ravioli? Ravioli's great. I just got her a custom name tag that's shaped like a ravioli piece. Oh my god. <laughs> I love yeah. it. It's great. Uh, she's a she's a very good girl. Aww. She's hanging out with mom while we're recording right now. Just to dive back into it, though. Yeah, so he worked for Fujimoto, as we've talked about before. He also worked with the creator of Blue Exorcist and Hell's Paradise, which also worked for Fujimoto and created Ayashimon. So we've actually covered two former Fujimoto assistants on the show so far. Oh, so his other assistant that we've discussed created Don to Don, but we've never covered anything he's done except for doing Patreon content on Don to Don. You know what? I feel like we did an assistant of the Hell's Paradise guy that might be the case maybe someone will drop us a comment and note who it is or maybe i'm just fucking remember not remembering things correctly which is totally a possibility yes and then though so this author though along with working fujimoto is pretty famous for creating a very particularly well-known manga and anime jordan what has this offer me high school family i'm just kidding it's it's spy high school family <laughs> Spy school family. No, it's a spy family, a.k.a. spy X family. If, if you're a buck gaijin, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that is by far the author's most famous work. I definitely think we'll make a lot of comparisons to it. He also has created a lot of one shots, most notably I Spy, for obvious reasons, and Rengoku no Ash, which Anya's character design is taken from that manga. Oh. And it's really interesting to see the character personality wise is very different. And she's a teenager. But literally, if you're like probably what Anya would look like if she was 16 years mm. old. Anya's like the chibi version of her. Also, it looks like he did something called Gekka Bijin, which I looked at and I saw Baka Gaijin. <laughs> so Baka. that's kind of why I said that a uh, couple sentences ago. <laughs> oh, goodness. And then um, this, by the way, we lied at the start of the show. So you just got Bamboo as a listener. Damn. And that this was not a Shonen Jump series. <laughs> this ran in Jump Square, which is supposed to be like the cool older brother that drives you, you know, that drops you off in middle school of Shonen Jump. It's the cool youth pastor of Shonen Jump. Axe body spray of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> manga magazines. And this series ran from November 4th, 2007 to August 4th, 2008. And it was one of the launch series of Jump Square. So it did not replace anything, but it has a very prestigious honor of being potentially the first ever series canceled in that magazine. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, dude. And so the series that replaced it, though, was the four Kusamoto siblings which I don't know anything about. Terrence, have you heard of this series? Never. No clue what that is, no. Oh, uh, yeah. If it's on Shonen Jump, I usually haven't heard of it. And it ran for nine chapters in two volumes, just as it was monthly. These were double-length chapters, so effectively it was about 18 chapters. Yeah, 07 was kind of just when America was really starting to actually give a shit about manga. Yeah. But, like, it hadn't fully switched over to, like, the immediate translation machine that we have today. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really until like the 2010s that you would get quality fan translations unless it was. Something oh, yeah. This fan translation is trash. <laughs> <laughs> this is real bad. Oh, understandable. <laughs> OK. And then shall we dive into Jordan's fantastic plot summary? Yes, please. All right. Tell us about this New York City story. Oh, this is the most New York City story I've ever read. New York City, a wretched hive of scum and Italian gangsters, mamma mia. The mobster known as Stepano Frappuccino. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Fabino Frappuccino is taken God, out. We, we've made way too many jokes in the chibi about this character's name. How can you not? I can't fucking say it without Stabano laughing. Stabano Frappuccino. Frappuccino. This spurred one of our favorite pieces of Patreon content where we said, what would all of our patrons' names be if they were named by this offer? <laughs> He's in the manga for one page. <laughs> and it's the most lasting impression of this entire series. Anyway, the mobster known as Stabano Frappuccino is taken out with a single bullet by Sister Militia, the Catholic assassin. By night, she is a deadly sniper, killing bad guys for church, delivering God's justice. But by day, she's Tist Alone, a college freshman who was raised in an orphanage run by nuns, of course. Who gives a shit about her? though because the real star is here because when tista of course absent-mindedly walks into traffic she's saved by Artie drawer i literally almost stopped reading the manga when it got to this guy 
If we contractually didn't have to read this series. <laughs> I could not believe it. I could not believe it. So his name is Artie Drawer. I'm going to call him Artie Drawer. He is, believe it or not, an artist who draws her. Artie lives at the West Genome Museum, which definitely exists over in New York because he's also an orphan. You know, there are a lot of orphans here. The museum owners try to smuggle drugs in his art, so Tista kills them, but not before a bad guy shoots Artie in his art hand. He brushes it off because it's so cool and it doesn't matter at all, even though it seems like it will. But Tista feels really bad about it regardless. Artie starts trying to find Tista, basically stalking her and putting his super shockingly accurate <laughs> drawing online. I mean, like, it's hard to communicate the differences you get into drawing when everything's already a drawing. Yeah. Only Odo was able to actually make it where it was a sketch of someone that looked like someone poorly right. drew the person. See, that's the problem. Artie's supposed to be a good artist, so you can't do that. So it's like all that happens is you have him draw a panel from the manga. <laughs> but yeah, he, he also makes like a shitty art piece that everybody thinks is super cool and says like, come home. And it's so mysterious and evocative. In universe, at least, it is extremely cool and evocative. It moves. It just moves everyone who sees it, including Tista, who recognizes is that it's a message to her. While this is happening, Tista continues murdering bad guys, but she's haunted by the death of her biological father, which she blames herself for and was locked in a room with his corpse for like 70 hours or something. She didn't go to sleep. She just stared at the corpse. Just stared at the corpse, you know? Uh, <laughs> now, it really fucked up her circadian rhythm and she never really recovered from it, which is not a joke. That's literally what happened. Popcorn David. Every kid at the orphanage sometimes has double Sharingan, and it's never explained. Tissa at least has her dad's Sharingan transplanted into Just her like head. Just like Kakashi. <laughs> yeah, and it's causing her to go blind. Maybe. She's definitely going blind. Also, a detective named Snow is looking for her. Oh, God, I have to keep writing this story. <laughs> was that wrote. the girl? Yeah, Snow. <laughs> I didn't know she had a name. I think she was an FBI agent or something, though. She just kept showing up. I think she was supposed to be a better character. <laughs> she was. Yeah, I thought about adding her as a character in this section. I was like, nah, she's not really. I knew I had to put her in, but I just had no idea. As like, she shows up in like two chapters for a long time, but they don't explain. Like, it's kind of like she is the younger a detective to this older detective, but they don't get along and they don't really go. Like, it's not really explained as to who is doing what. Nothing about this manga is explained. I don't understand what happened in this See, plot. Th you'll find out I don't either. <laughs> See, an interesting thing yeah. about writing these plot summaries is that you realize halfway through sometimes, oh my God, nothing happened it's, in this yeah, manga. It's... We will dive into that, so let me finish reading this. A kid was found murdered by the Red Dog Gang. They hate the White Monkey Gang because of Japanese metaphors, which would not make sense in New York City. No, it wouldn't! We meet a little boy named Ligma. <laughs> I mean, Pigma, Black Marker. As I said in the chat, I could have seen them have to go to like a strip club and meet a character named D's Nuts. Yeah. I would have not blinked twice. I'd be like, yeah, that's definitely their, what the name Pigma was. Pigma Black Marker. Who does graffiti, believe it or not. He's also a black character named Pigma Black Marker. It's bad. It's real bad for a bunch of yeah. reasons. Yeah, I, I don't think Mongo is at the point where they realize like that's kind of in the last like five years where you've really started to see consistent portrayal of people of color in Mongo. Yeah. This is like 15 years too early for that. Uh, but it's also like way too late to do some of the <laughs> shit that they do. Like you got the fucking white circles around the mouths. It's like, yeah. come on, man. Well, Robot Laser Beam was like 2012. Yeah, but that was racist. <laughs> that was very racist. <laughs> Just a quick spiel is they kept referring to this what the one black character in this as fucking like King Kong. And there's an art piece of him like kidnapping a woman with pretty much drawn as a monkey with his dreadlocks. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, it would really suck if like they had a character in this manga who was black and his, na his name was Ape or something. That would be like terrible. <laughs> right? Anyway, he shows up and talks about how he's excited for his extremely long and successful it life. Literally is. He is immediately murdered by the Red Dog's gang leader, <laughs> Mashiro Apes. And it didn't matter because his mom made turkey. Okay. Because <laughs> they kept talking about how it was almost Thanksgiving for some reason. That part where he gets murdered, it's like, I don't know where he came from. It's like he's doing graffiti. The nun sees the graffiti. She's like, oh, this is really nice. And he appears over a wall. He was like, thanks, I did it. She was like, you shouldn't spray paint on the wall. And then he died he got shot and then his mom made turkey and i don't like there's 
it's trying to emulate film techniques because I know what it's doing yeah. and we'll get we'll dive into it. But let's just finish the summary and then we can start tearing this apart. He basically showed up and was like, man, I'm retiring tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sure love my red shirt. And so Mashiro is killed by Sister Militia somehow, but the manga starts getting real tough to follow. Sister starts having a ton of flashbacks about a little girl named Susie or Susie, depending on the panel. It's spelled which, different, to be clear. <laughs> they're spelled differently, which I feel like Jordan now is like, okay, that didn't make sense reading the same name twice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Susie has a dad unlike Tista but her dad was abusive Susie loves singing so her evil dad crushed her throat and Tista murdered him as her first kill flash forward to today and Artie meets his mute friend Susie and he starts to remember that oh yeah they all grew up in an orphanage with Tista <laughs> and were best friends crazy how he completely like forgot it. about this they did a Final Fantasy 8 literally Final Fantasy 8 yeah oh my god except for they had a reason for that in Final Fantasy 8 it's just like this is is causing your brain to forget things this one it was just like the church did it (laughs) It I don't know what they did I I really don't there's like one page where they're just like things that we use seem to be working but they don't explain like what they did at all yeah I don't know really what (laughs) happened in this month no one does (laughs) But Terrence may know what happened in the last part of the series, as please, uh, popcorn Uh, Let's see what happens. The church stripped Tista of her license to kill as she starts losing her mind, seeing confusing and difficult to follow images of herself as a switched little child commanding her to kill. The church then tells her she can get her license back if she kills Artie, which, as you can imagine, is very sad for her. Now, I don't understand why she had to kill Artie. Like, another thing they didn't explain. Um, Anyway. I think what it was is they were like, you got like too close to this kid and we need you to be like a cold, unfeeling assassin. So you have to kill him. I think. Uh (laughs) I don't know. Uh, uh, However, when she's lining up a shot, she gets cold feet. When another Catholic assassin starts shooting at Artie, who is totally unfazed by getting shot in the limbs. Just then. Yeah, he he just gets (laughs) shot in the arm and the leg. This is is just an art student. He gets shot twice and is unfazed. He's just an art student, right? Like, Yeah. (laughs) Just then, Snow from the NYPD shows up and starts revealing that she deduced everything. Tista gets big mad about Artie getting shot and gets in a sniper duel where both she and the bad guy get shot. Now, this bad guy is the most Spy X family looking person in this entire manga. (laughs) Like, he looks like he's from a different, like a whole different show, like, or a whole different manga. It's wild. He showed up and I was like, am I supposed to know who this guy is? Right. Yeah. I was just like, is this supposed to be her dad that died and he's not actually dead? This author has a problem in this manga of introducing characters that look very similar to characters he's already introduced. Yes. Also, always a terrible idea to have that and then not really have different shades of hair color because they all have white hair. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is why a lot of manga authors just give their characters crazy hair because it's like, okay. Yeah, you get to differentiate. I will never, ever mistake Yugi Moto for another character. It will yeah. never happen. I'm looking at my uh, Dragon Ball figures right now and like Goku, like their faces are pretty similar, but you could tell by like, oh, Gohan's hair goes straight up and back. Goku's hair kind of sprays everywhere. Vegeta's is more cone shaped. Like there's the small signifiers and this manga is just like, everyone looks the same. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's that silhouette, man. You got to get like a different silhouette. I legitimately thought that Pigma was two different characters by the way they talked about him because like he's the one that gets shot, but I didn't understand that it was him that got shot. I thought it was a completely different character, like his older brother or something because. Yeah, but sorry, did we finish? No, the... uh, no, hold on. no. Months later, Tista wakes up from her coma to see Artie, who is visiting her in prison. She got 120 years in prison, but is over for parole in about 40 even though she murdered like 50 people who cares <laughs> also her priest friend that i didn't mention gets murdered by a kid i didn't mention named scar band-aid scar band-aid <laughs> i really can't believe that was his name. <laughs> He's named that because he cuts himself and was trained by the assassin from earlier because apparently no one died in that sniper duel <laughs> god two snipers get shot in the head nobody dies it's totally fine neither of them die it's great oh my god and they don't she doesn't like she gets blinded in the eye she didn't even lose the eye where she got shot no did she get shot in the eye yeah i think that was the idea well that's symbolic i couldn't tell so we'll get into tist alone middle name (laughs) Allah. she's she's lonely get it she's lonely 
play that Miss Biggie noise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dead air for you. Yeah, she's just average teenage girl, except for she's a murderer and she wears a jester's outfit. What the fuck was sometimes. that? What the fuck was that? They like completely dropped that part after the like one appearance. She's just wearing like this weird hat with like little cush balls on it, you know, like little little puff balls on the end, like a, like a Santa hat or a fucking pom poms. Pom poms. Thank you, thank you, David. Yeah, it was very strange. She is big sad, basically. Yeah, and she has like a psycho, like an evil spirit lives in her eye, kind of. I think. I, it was not very clear. How <laughs> she has like an evil spirit. Her eye can turn into a cross, which is not a very subtle metaphor. It's not. Yeah. It, did Artie's eyes turn into a cross at some point? Did I imagine that? It probably did. I feel like other people's did. I, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> it's so badly laid out that being confused is just like the number one thing. Yeah. Do y'all have anything else you want to say about her, or should we get into Artie? Uh, uh... You mean, you, do you want to get into the main character of this manga? <laughs> he is not the main character. He disappeared for, like, eight chapters of, like, a, or like five chapters of a nine-chapter series. And then he's the most... He's the character that the artist loves the most. I can tell you that. I was going to say, we spend so much time with her that, like, nothing happens. Like, for, like, good six chapters. It's just, like, meandering. Just, like, does she like to kill? Is she going to kill? She's going these superpowers and it hurts her eyes she can't see and then he gives her glasses and now she can see but now she can't see because it's the glasses and then she get the eyeballs from her father and the glasses <laughs> she put on and i'm just like i don't understand anything that's happening right now also apparently the eyes give you tunnel vision like which never mattered ever you can see super far i think you're farsighted and you have tunnel vision yeah fantastic amazing power i don't get it <laughs> i think it's supposed to be your eye is always super focused i have no idea yeah but then she, like her eyes like get fucked up and she can't see everything's blurry and i'm just like i don't usually when that happens there's a moment where she's like you know i can't see normally but when i get into like the when i get into the murder uh mode or whatever the danger zone when I get on that highway to the danger zone, my eyes sharpen immensely. I get an eagle eye <laughs> or something. Just say fucking some reason why this girl with extremely deteriorating eyesight is able to be like the most accurate fucking sniper in the world. Right. It's not even attempted to, like, explain. It's, like, slightly acknowledged, maybe. I feel like an easy fix would just be she has these eyes that make her see extremely well. Like, she can pinpoint anything from wherever. And she got them from her father. And now, like, the ghost of her father is in her brain. That would be, like, a simple fix. But they're just like, no. <laughs> no, it's more complicated than that. No, come on. Yeah, the series made it way more complicated. I think that's a really great idea. And then, though, just so just to wrap up the character session, Jordan, as our resident artist, though, do you want to talk about Artie Drawer? Artie Drawer. <laughs> Can't fucking believe that's his name. Artie Drawer. Artie Drawer. Depending on which chapter you're reading, it is insane to me that this is his name. He is absolutely the author self insert. There is you cannot convince me uh, in any way that this is not who the artist wished he was at art school well yeah i mean that last page where he says wait a second i have a great idea and he draws a picture of anya <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah the last page in this manga is where he's like man i'm gonna make this all into a story here's my <laughs> first chapter of tista by Artie drawer We've read a series where that was the ending, though. Yeah, we did. I can't remember which series, but that was where the character, like, turned it, like, the entire manga into, like, a story. Monster Hunter Orage. Oh, fuck, you're right. Yeah, what a weird way to end that. Oh, yeah, and it ends with him selling the rights to the manga <laughs> as a series. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, <laughs> fuck, I forgot about that. But anyway, he's just so cool, and he hangs out with, like, all his cool art friends, and he's so talented, David. Oh, my God, this one piece he made. Whoa, it's not even in the show, and everybody just sees it, and they're blown away. Amazing. There's a hot girl who totally loves him, but he has only eyes for tits who looks like a 12 year old <laughs> and tista doesn't have eyes for anything because she only has one she, eye no she has eyes for one thing murder yes yes oh my god um speaking of murder should we kill this series where we talk about what this series fucked up 
Yeah. So speaking of people who are pretty killer, Terrence, why don't you tell us what's the first thing you would say this series fucked up? Everything. (laughs) (laughs) Everything about this comic is bad. Um, Well, (laughs) and scene. There's some really cool art in this comic. But yeah. then, like, most of it is very hard to follow. Like, Spy X Family has a lot of varied characters, but they all appear from the same art style. This looks like it was, like, every person was drawn by a different artist. Yeah. There's no straight style to it. Like, l- the layout is hard to follow. I was saying in the in the chat that we had, uh, it's it's like he drew this specifically to be an anime instead of a manga. I think that was a great point. It just, like, jumps between panels. There's no flow to the panels. And most of the backgrounds are just white. So it's just, like, I don't know where they are. And, like, a lot of the backgrounds are just, like, random city stuff, like, inside of a building. And I'm just, like, I don't know if they're in a different room now. I don't know if they went to a different spot in the city. Like... It's very bad at giving you a sense of space. Yeah, and I think that relates to the fact that why was this set in New York City? (laughs) Why did you set this in a real-world location and do nothing with that concept? Because you just restrained yourself. What are you talking about? They had Stabino Frappuccino. (laughs) They did something with that (laughs) with the fucking world. If you're going to take the burden of setting a manga in a real location, you should be getting value out of it because now all it is is people are going to criticize the fact that you fucked up, like, you know, like, if he... Like, now the geography has to fit these rules instead of it being whatever he needs to for the plot. David, there is a very important reason, and that is that there are a lot of Catholics in you. (laughs) (laughs) Did did y'all ever read or watch Blood Blockade Battlefront? No. No, I've heard of it, though. It's good. Like, it is a story that takes place in New York, but something happened where, like, basically a demon gate opened under New York and, like, a bunch of monsters came out. But now some of the monsters, they uh, live a... Wait, what's the fantasy part? The <laughs> Sounds like the rats, am I right, David? The... the monsters, like, live among people now. Like, everyone kind of lives together. Sounds like the rats, am I right, David? I live in Manhattan. I, I, I get it. There's a giant dome over the city, like, so it's not easy to get in and out and stuff so like the rest of the world is regular but there's like monsters and stuff in in new york and like that series made it feel like they were in new york like it was fantastical but like unlike this where it's just like you don't know anything about new york you didn't try to yeah. like explain no. the spider-man the fake spider-man superhero Blunderman, best part of the whole fucking manga. <laughs> Clearly written as the as to be like a manga gag character that yeah. would not exist in America, especially in 2007. For kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> Billy and Mandy, I was thinking about, showed a lot of male nipples. Yeah. This was beyond that. This was closer to like hentai came in. If you yes. Yes. That. That's what I was yeah. trying to think of. I couldn't think of who it was, but yes, hentai common. Yeah. Yes. I completely agree, and I'm just thinking about how even Ninja Gaiden 2 did this better, where, you know, it was set in New York and you were fighting monsters, but at least you had a boss fight against the Statue of Liberty. (laughs) You know what? Yeah, it's like, okay, that's fair. You can't have a Statue of Liberty fight in kind of anywhere else except maybe Las Vegas, you know? Yeah. I think that's a great point. I also think that this series, just as we talked about, the characters are non-existent. The plot just meanders. I very much struggle to understand. And I think that talk about the art style being inconsistent is really a great point because I have been thinking while reading this that it would have been actually not so obvious this offer created Spy Family because I would say like every once in a while you'll see that art. Yeah. But he does so many different inconsistent styles, though you do see the art gets more closer near the end of it. And it's like when you read stuff like Biichi or if you read Monster Hunter Arage, you're like, OK, I can clearly see what successful manga they made. But this it was weird that you really couldn't blatantly tell this was by the creator of Spy Family, like with those other series. Until like the last couple chapters. Yeah. yeah. Well, the part that made me feel like it was when um, Tista was imagining her was remembering her herself as like a little kid. Mm-hmm. And you had, like, some small children. They were kind of, like, being kind of scared by adults in, like, a cute way. Yeah. And it was like, oh, yeah, that's Anya. There you go. Right. There was, like, one panel, at least, where I was like, oh, yeah, that's Anya. That's Spy Family right there. Yeah. Looking in the notes, uh, there were two things that I that I wanted to bring up. You said the writing is so flowery, it's hard to follow. There is a lot of, like, semi-quoting the Bible and stuff and, like, trying to... It's very... We brought this up in the chat. It was very Boondock Saints and... It's extremely Boondock Saints. <laughs> this manga saw boondock saints and was like oh that fucking rules i can do that they'll have like flowery 
fonts for like the bible quotes so i'm just like is she thinking about this is this a thing she's saying i don't know yeah. and then the other point i want to bring up is tista is naked a lot and i'm not yeah. sure like are we supposed to find her like sexy or yeah. There's like drawings of her, like uh, the the cover would be like her laying naked and she's got a gun. And I'm just At like, at least she's over age. Yes. I was shocked and so happy when <laughs> she was like, sorry, I'm going to drop out of college yes. right now. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> her age is not apparent for like no. five chapters. It's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, I mean, I knew that she was supposed to be sexy because like, you know, Artie finds her hot, you know, <laughs> I mean, at least she's drawn realistically. Like there are people that look like that for manga. Yeah. I mean, you know, most people don't have a face that looks like a triangle, but, you know, <laughs> you keep shapey triangle men out of this. <laughs> I hear he hates particle man. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they might be giants. Hey, oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's a great song. Um, By the way, so one last thing I want to say. Is this is the first time I've ever actually seen a manga say, protect that smile straightforward, which is <laughs> yeah. like a joke you make about terrible series. Right. <laughs> it's true. And they straight up say, I have to protect that smile in this. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. It's truly, like, abysmal, like, how bad this <laughs> manga is, like. <laughs> it's so funny it's spy family is one of my favorite mangas currently running like i remember reading it i was just like oh this is like it's a romantic comedy and there's action and there's cute stuff and i was like this is really good and then you wanted one of you emailed me i don't remember who it was you're like hey do you want to do this manga it's from the career of spy family i was like i love spy family and then i'm just like this cannot be the same person who made it right it'd be like if ryan johnson the guy who made knives out yeah. Oh, so it was just like, oh, yeah, did you know he made bad Star Wars movie? <laughs> well, I was going to say, do you know he made brutal Boondock Saints? It would be like that. It, it's like <laughs> the same jump. Or you can say how he made Star Wars Episode Eight, which was terrible. I'm not getting in this. Arg I'm not getting in this argument. We're not going to argue about Star Wars Episode Eight. I'll choose now to say this, by the way, as a known fact, he actually hates Spy Family and literally does it for the paycheck. This is the kind of story he actually wants to be telling. Understand. <laughs> I kind of do. Uh, so see, here's the thing that I've noticed with a lot of these manga authors, like in their first manga as a flop. And when I say this, I'm thinking of Instant Bullet and yeah, Philosophy yeah. School. And I'm thinking of uh, Biichi. I feel like there is one more. But the point is, when they get out there, they're like, yeah, I'm going to make something like dark, something like edgy, something like that really just makes you think and like, yeah, really like is poignant and intense and then they do it and then they realize oh shit i'm really just good at the cute stuff aren't yeah. i yeah i think for the sake of time we could definitely dive into the whole instant bullet thing but uh listeners can listen into about instant bullet and find out really how that series had a very strong lifeline to love is war but though now that we're talking about some series that we actually enjoyed about that why don't we get into the very short positive section which jordan is going to tell us as the biggest fan of this series what he actually liked about it Dude, sometimes this art's fucking great. Mm -hmm. That, like, seriously, dead serious. There are some panels in this that are incredible yeah. looking. Like, absolutely amazing. Perspective is often, like, incredible. Some of the line work is amazing. He's trying to do all these really interesting things. Unfortunately, that leads to the manga being hard to follow sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but sometimes it's like some every now and then it's like, oh, that still looks really cool. Yeah, there's some cool scenes, but then. I mean, the writing ruins <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. I can't think of a moment when I have anything positive to say about the fucking writing, except for maybe like the one section where Tista's a little girl talking to her dad and he says something that reminds me of on. And, oh, and her her dad says, actually, Tista, don't tell the, the nuns this, but uh, I think when people die, they don't go to heaven. They become aliens. Yeah, that was extremely cute. That was like a very cute moment. Scientology. Reverse Scientology, David. <laughs> yeah. Also, Blunderman? Blunderman rules. <laughs> Blunderman yeah. kicks ass. Wait. I mean, you can see the parts that we like about the series is what he turned into Spy Family. Right. Exactly. It was just like like uh, Instant Bullet. Terrence, I forget if we mentioned this, but yeah, there was like three chapters in Instant Bullet, which is by the guy who did. Well, that was the part I said they can go listen to that episode so we don't tell this story again. But if you really want to. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Everybody go out, listen to the entire episode. Instant Bullet, please. 
And then listen to it again, because I don't think you got it right the first time. Trying to get that million listens. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll get there. Thanks to you. Everybody listen to that instant bullet episode at least three times, please. <laughs> yeah. Just leave it on when you're sleeping. No, play it loud. <laughs> anyway, no, this is, um, there are brief glimmers where you're like, okay, all right, maybe this guy didn't pick the worst profession <laughs> of being, uh, that he could do by being a manga author, you know? Yeah. There was a time, like, I completely forgot that this was the same author as Spy X Family. So I got to, like, chapter five, and I was like, I swear to God, I hope this man is not working in the industry anymore, because I was so mad at how bad the story was. <laughs> there are some cases where they don't, and they just start making porn instead. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Oh, I think it was Bocas on the offer gave up and now he just draws porn. And the art, is, that's actually pretty, I've heard it's pretty well drawn porn. <laughs> Something I do actually like about this series is along with the art itself, I also think this series actually did an interesting idea of put, inserting elements that kind of just felt like character details or setting details. Like he does a lot of really great establishing shots, mm -hmm. little character moments yeah. that don't really directly have relevance to the plot. And I mean that in a good way. Like, you know how Chainsaw Man does an excellent job of having those little details to make it kind of feel like a movie where people are actually living their lives. Yeah. This is something that I definitely can tell that he and Fujimoto were kindred spirits and that they both really love movies. Right. You're right in the sense a lot of the little things in this manga are actually not that bad. And he is trying to do more visual storytelling. The problem is, like, he's trying to be subtle, but the problem is he's not good enough at it to properly still communicate those things. Yeah. Understandable. He's not having somebody beat you over the head with the information, which is nice, but then the information is not conveyed. Yeah. It's just missing. He doesn't really properly replace it with anything. Yeah, it doesn't go from point A to point B. It's just like point A, and then it just kind of drags out, and then peters off and falls off a cliff. It's like there's a balance where, like, that he just doesn't get to. Yeah, it's something. It's an interesting problem. It's like the reverse problem that a lot of things have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is one of those manga where the artist or the author clearly didn't really know what he was doing and he saw what he was doing wasn't working. So he kept trying to fix his series mm -hmm. without actually fixing the infrastructure of why this series wasn't right. working. So I think then on that note, actually, of how this series really could have fixed its infrastructure, let's get into where it could have gone. So, Jordan, though, what would you say, though, is the biggest thing you would have changed about this series to have made it not a failure? Get rid of Tista. Just get rid of all that <laughs> shit. No, really. No, really. Get rid of the Catholic assassin mm -hmm. shit. Nobody cares. It is generic as fuck. There is like nothing interesting about it at all. I've seen it a billion fucking mm -hmm. times before done. Way better. Just make a fucking manga about arty in art school. Because that is what you are so much more interested in. You don't even need to have like some kind of action. But if you must, then I don't know. Maybe he could still have been raised in an assassin orphanage and stuff. But like, even though arty is arguably not the main character, the author wants him to be the yeah. main character. He is so much more interested in Artie than any of the other characters. Tista seems to exist just to be his cool manic pixie dream girl girlfriend. Like, you just get rid of the violence. You know how I would have fixed it? Oh. Like, you can pretty much structure this the same way. There's a silent girl on campus who's kind of awkward and stuff, but she's a, really a badass in real life. And the way you do that is have her just like, she's like a prodigy of a martial arts style. Like, her dad taught her this insane martial arts, and she's great at it. But in reality, she's just kind of a shy, awkward girl. And then Artie sees her, and she's just like, oh, this girl, she's, she's cute. And then he draws her a picture, and then their relationship, like, blossoms from there, and he helps her break out of her shell, which it seems like they were trying to do with the comic, but this comic's bad and nothing ever happens. You see, Terrence, the problem with that is that there aren't really uh, that many like karate dojos <laughs> in New York, but there's like a ton no Catholic. of Catholics <laughs> in New York. <laughs> she could still use the nunchucks. <laughs> yeah, hey. None. Yeah. Nunchucks. None your <laughs> business. <laughs> what they call her assassin agency. <laughs> None your business, sister. Oh, that's the character's name in the reboot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sister None your business. Yeah, and you know what would have been a really cool character moment? It, what? What if she wasn't 100% perfect all the time and like say her target like bent down to pick something up and she shot like an innocent person walking behind him and had to deal with that? Yeah, I, I mean, the other thing is that like on one hand, she's perfect at like one thing she does, but she also doesn't really do anything that she like enjoys. Yeah. 
Everything she does is stuff that she has to do that she hates doing. As a result, you don't learn anything about like what she actually wants, what she wants to do, yeah. who she wants to be. Like it's kind of hinted that she wants to be a teacher, but it feels like that's the she doesn't really want to do that. That's what everybody assumes she wants. Like it's not really and also that's generic as fuck. Just I would like say, it's really weird that all of the characters surrounding her are the most supportive characters. Like there's like all the people in the church and Artie and even like the people who uh, like Artie's friends you never learned the name of like the girl she was like Artie he loves you he's been looking for you forever like everyone around her is like extremely supportive and she's just like I'm a loner nobody likes me did anybody else think that that girl was Susie or that Susie was that girl no when I Susie didn't even think, I didn't even think about that I didn't think about that at all oh never mind I got confused <laughs> it's not hard because they have the no. they have the same face like just the other girl has on lipstick yeah, one of them is a Garyu girl, which, as we all know, is it's just all over New right. York. Yeah. <laughs> why is this in New York? Set it. Set it in Tokyo. Jesus. Yeah. No reason why this was in New York. <laughs> Should have been in Tokyo. Like it's a big city. You live in Japan. Like you know about Japanese culture. Also, oh my God, the way the the mentality this guy has about the NYPD yeah. is hilarious. He's like, "Oh, your friend's on drugs. Well, that's even more of a reason to call the police. They'll help her, and I'm they, they can get a specialist." And I'm like, ah, "That did ah, not ah. age well." Oh, David, this was even worse in 2007. Oh yeah, and it's just like, "Ha ha, you are not American, my yeah. friend." Yeah, wasn't that the eight days of days of stop and frisk? Yeah, six years after. 9-11, yeah, police are totally fine and normal. Yeah, totally fine in New York. Yeah. Yeah, like, it was interesting to find all these little tells where it's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, for instance, um, I mean, first of all, the Red Dog and White Monkey gangs, yeah. the two famous gangs from New York. Yep. No one takes the subway in this entire series. No. Blunderman's uh, secret identity is addicted to dating sims. Dating and I'm sims, just like, yes. This is America in 2007. Like, no, he's addicted to World of Warcraft. He's addicted to Counter Strike. Choose something else. Just have him addicted to porn, Jesus. Like, you right. know, there's so well, many Jordan, other things. It's for kids. Yeah, the kids who are watching it and being like, he's addicted to dating sims, which happens here. The kids know he's addicted to <laughs> dating sims. Why do New York orphanage kids know what a dating sim <laughs> right. is? I think, though, we're kind of getting into miscellaneous thoughts. So before we transition to that, I also want to say this series could have just been about cute assassin girls doing cute assassin things. Like, imagine what if it was a bunch of cute assassin girls living in the John Wick universe. Like, I was expecting there to be at least one scene in the sniper duel where their bolts hit each other. Yeah, me too. Mid-air. Like, dumb shit like that. I thought she was going to shoot out his bullet when it first showed up. Yeah, I thought that she was going to shoot the bullet out of the air. But no, no. he just gets <laughs> shot twice. And then it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm just imagining like the light novel or dojin that's like, uh, help my, <laughs> my, my assassin, my 18 year old girl assassin harem girlfriend is too shy. <laughs> what if it's it's just John Wick dies and gets reincarnated as a teenage I girl? Watch it. Oh hell I'm yeah! Into it. Help! I was a deadly assassin and got reincarnated as a teenage girl. I'm just thinking of all the better shows to recommend at the end of this. Oh, we're gonna, we've are gonna. we got one more <laughs> section to go through that, my friends. So let's get into the miscellaneous thoughts. So Terrence, though, tell us, what were some little thoughts that you just weren't able to talk about yet in this recording? I feel like I've gotten everything out about the things, because there's just like so many small things that bother me about this manga. Like there's a, there's a part at the beginning where she comes back, it's right after she met Artie, and she comes back to the church where there's an orphanage, and uh, the kids are like all picking on her and everything. And she like shows up and it's very like gag manga. She got beaten up or she has like the bump on her head and everything. But then it just automatically changed into like the most dire situation ever because it's just like, you got to go out and kill again. It's just like, what is the tone of this manga supposed to be? She's working for shitty Alucard from Helsing. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's like fucking so hard to keep a beat on what's going on. There's like a two or three chapter spread where I just had no clue what the fuck was happening. None of this series made sense. There were at least for most of the manga, you could at least follow sort of what's going on, even if you don't really understand it. But there's just like two or three chapters where I was just like, fuck it. I have no clue what's happening right in the middle. Like, I was just like, what? I was extremely high while I was reading this. <laughs> nice. 
Hell yeah. I'm like, I can remember all of it, but even then, I'm just so like... You're, wait, 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 wait. So that means you're two kind of bakers. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Uh, hey. But yeah, like, right in the middle, it's just like, where are we going? Like, who are these characters? There's like four black guys, maybe? <laughs> yeah. There's like a priest black guy. And I think he's... There are two murdered children who are black. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> something in here and then mashiro apes <laughs> oh speaking of murder by the way i want to give a shout out to the dude who said call an ambulance for the guy who had the top of his head blown off <laughs> yeah! i really liked how they were like call an ambulance oh just call the police that was, yeah that was good actually that was one of the best scenes that was pretty good i will say that the assassination the drawing of like the bullet hitting them looks extremely cool yeah. Their face distorts and everything from where the bullet goes in. Looks super cool. How it happens? No idea. Absolutely no clue. <laughs> For a while, they were like, oh, one shot, one kill. And that was their whole thing. And then they show her firing like warning shots at a bunch of people. And it's like, so I guess she isn't doing one shot, one kill anymore. Yeah. But they don't mention that that's significant. It seemed notable. I guess it's not a big deal. OK, like shit like that. Nothing in this series is a big deal. Nothing in this series is a big deal. You can get shot in multiple points of your body as long as it's not the heart or the brain, you'll be fine. This absolutely operates by, uh, like, edgy 90s action movie rules. Yeah. yeah. I also just want to say, though, you know who else rules is Maxi B. So I just want to know a fun Maxi B fact is, you know, when I said at the start, or maybe I forgot, but if I did say it might have been the first canceled series, you'll have to check out Maxi B's full notes on our Patreon to find out why. Yeah, it turns out this section is pointless. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. The Small Tourism Diary manga Living in Akiba by... Um, by by Daisuke Kadokuni. Sure, that's a name. Also ended in the same issue, but was a small series never meant to even have a volume release, and so it doesn't really count. Yeah, it just ended. Yeah. They also want to say, apparently this is going to be officially translated into English in May. See, that's what happens when a shitty manga's author becomes famous. Has Biichi been officially <laughs> translated yet? I don't think it has. It probably will be if Fire Force keeps doing well. <laughs> yeah, I also had one small thought is, so they call the CNN parallel GNN. You yeah. know what would have been a really, really great name for it would have been? <laughs> I see you. See what NYCNN. You see <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised I've never seen that joke before. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I'm so funny and hilarious. Oh, that's so funny, David. Oh, my God. You should you should have a podcast. <laughs> oh, we should. We should also hear everyone's final thoughts as we get into the final verdict. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for being on. This has been yeah, a ton thank of you fun. So much. Yes, it was a lot of fun. So to dive into the six-word summaries, we're going to start with the community from Tucker, who is listening in right now. Hi, Tucker. Japan thinks Americans are all Catholic. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially in New York, it's not like there's like, Jews there yeah. or anything. Yeah, there's no notable <laughs> not Catholic population. Why did he use Boston? Definitely saw the Boondock Saints. I don't think this guy recognizes that there's any difference between Boston and New York, and he doesn't recognize that the Catholic aspect is an aspect specifically of Boston, I would assume yeah. at least. I think he just thinks that's an American city thing. Yeah. From Orange, I don't remember God allowing murder. <laughs> Bird. Church of violence, but like literal. Hey. Resident Warhammer nerd, Sisters of Battle did it better. <laughs> From real, the church is bad. No way. Whoa. From Chemi Chems, truly time for John 1135. Which is which Jesus, is Jesus wept. wept. Yeah. <laughs> Dude rocks, Mother Caramel's less evil USA branch. From 090Z, who is also listening in, man really, man really named an artist to Artie. He did. <laughs> yeah, he did. From King of Carrots, Sistatista, <laughs> never gonna miss ya. <laughs> and from Engine the Engineer, Ronald Reagan would be really proud. Nice. Also, I do want to say this entire manga in my head, I've just been like, Sistatista. <laughs> well, there you go. You and King of Carrots are best friends now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of best friends now, <laughs> Terrence, what was, what was yours? Boondock Saints is a really bad movie. Yeah! Oh, that's fucking awesome. Just like episode eight of Star Wars, I will not be taking any further notes. <laughs> <laughs> How about yours, Jordan? I wish my girlfriend killed people. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> that feel when no murder waifu. Yeah, that, that, that feel when no assassin nun girlfriend. <laughs> So I had four that some of them are good, some are bad. So you'll tell me which ones to cut. But my first one was Too Much Cross and It's Crosshairs. Teenage Psycho Killer, Kesku <laughs> Nice. 
My Death Note is a mm-hmm. gun. I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. And every chapter is an anthology series. <laughs> yeah. I like My Death Note is a gun. It's short. It's simple. I get yeah, it. Yeah, that was my favorite. Reading, yeah. When I got to the end of it, of the end of this, I was just like, he really read uh, Death Note. Like, he absolutely was just yeah. like, I could do that too. I think he wanted to have that girl detective be an L character, mm. but he just he just couldn't get there. No. Just could not get there. This is making me think of Super Smartphone, where Terrence, are you familiar with that series? Yeah, I've heard of it. I've I know. <laughs> I've heard it's very stupid. That series. But instead, he just calls the cops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally it. Uh... But unlike that series, I'm going to call this one a flop. How about you guys? Jesus Christ. It's or actually a... a certified flop. This was pretty fucking bad. Yeah, this is uh, this is a certified flop, honestly. <laughs> it might be the worst comic I've ever read. Like, oh my god, it's abysmal. You summer child. Yeah, we we have read worse. I than mean, this. I can imagine <laughs> this is bad. But this is like, very bad. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I think because I read it all the way through, it just compounds on how awful it is as it goes on, and it's only nine chapters. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. This manga was short and it felt long. Like, I know they're longer than normal chapters, but still. Right, yeah, I was. I just kept looking at the clock just like, am I almost done with this? <laughs> am I really a third through this chapter? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. God, yeah, I hate those fucking double chapters. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, all right, so since we all said this was a flop, um, Terrence, what would you say someone should check out instead? Go watch Lycoris Recoil if you want to see, like, teenage assassins. And I do. And I do. Didn't Mother's Basement do a video on that? He did. Uh, and it's one of the best series from last year. It's amazing. It's so much better written. The characters are so much more likable. The girls are, are trained from a young age to be assassins. But the the ones in this and the ones, the main characters in this, they live at a little cafe and uh, they work out at the cafe and there's and their their leader or whatever. He's a black man. Uh, he looks mm. like a regular black person and not oh, whatever's happening in this. Oh, man it's amazing it's a really good show i 100 percent suggest that if you're looking for something about assassinations that's also extremely good i would like to point out if you say oh it's way better than this it could still be like a seven <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could have said that about the eighth episode of star wars <laughs> yeah oh david david you you don't want to open that can of worms i'm not having this discussion <laughs> i did already uh jordan how about you what's your recommendation Honestly, you know what movie captures like the grit of New York and like like wanting to be like a violent like vigilante Moonstruck. or whatever? Yes, but also <laughs> Taxi Driver. Oh, that's a great recommendation. Yeah, just go watch Taxi Driver. And that did lead to an assassination attempt. One of the best movies ever about New York. Yeah, just go do that instead of reading this. Yeah. I like it. My recommendation is I think John Wick is a pretty safe one. Yeah. Um, But I also want to shout out to Luke from his book club, Assassination Nation, where if you just want to see stupid fucking assassin antics where there's a character I think named Fuck. (laughs) Yeah, his his name is Fuck. I love that guy. It's like six issues, and that was a great read. Yeah, and the main character is a is a gay black man, and it's list it's totally normal. The black guy in uh in Black Horse Recall, he's a gay black man. Oh, oh cool. that's really nice. Yeah. 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 Good show. So, though, since we call this a certified flop, though, I think this. So, Terrence gives it the honor of being the worst manga he's ever read. But, Jordan, I think this is still not in that absolute basement <laughs> of like Build King and um, School Judgment. Let me just tell you uh, in this series, I did not see a moment where a bunch of adults started talking about how hot a 12 year old no. is. So, this is not the worst thing that I've no. read for this series. That, yeah. That's the bar that we're talking from when we say this isn't the worst series no. we've read. I'd like you to remember that. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. But I think that's enough of that. Let's get into the shout outs. Mm-hmm. Terrence, you've almost made it to the end. Thank you so much for the sacrifice of reading this manga. You can now flex on anyone who mentions Spy uh, Family yeah. to uh, you. You don't know. You don't know. Much like how we mentioned Beachy whenever Soul Eater comes up. <laughs> can you please tell the audience all the wonderful things you do so that they can go check that out instead of reading Tista? If you go to my Twitter uh, at The Black Nerd, you can find most of my links there. But uh, The Black Nerd's Baked Goods is uh, my recipe shop on coffee, uh, ko-fi.com slash The Black Nerd slash shop. Uh, uh, I have a podcast podcast called low stakes which is just like a regular conversation podcast to just have a guest on and we talk for an hour and it goes from there Chill. i also have a twitch and a twitter and a youtube at the black nerd you can find those easily uh trying to 
to think if I'm doing anything else. I can't think of anything else that I'm doing, so I'll leave you with those. But I'm mostly on Twitter all the time, so. You just do those things, and then you get in a stasis pod. <laughs> yes, that's shaped like a giant cookie. Yeah, yes! It's called sleep. <laughs> he has the power to move time forward at the rate of one second per second. Oh, God, that that was... Fuck, where was... That was from, like... Yeah. Was that from Homestuck, or...? Metal Ocalypse, where they put the brown bags over their heads <laughs> so we can time travel at the speed of time. I also love that meme where it's, like, a guy who says, every minute in Africa, 60 seconds passes. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's like um, a joke from Problem Sleuth where there's like two guys and one of them is uh, can move time forward one second per second and one moves <laughs> backward one second per second. And when they get together, you're fucked. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Problem Sleuth better than Homestuck. Oh, absolutely. I dropped Homestuck. <laughs> Hundred percent. I got Jordan into Problem yeah. Sleuth while it was still running. That is one of the few things I was an OG on. Yeah, Problem Sleuth is just straight up one of the wackiest things yeah. I've ever read. I love it. Homestuck just got Dude, so pretentious so and it just got so... Those fucking chat logs. And I was just like, I can't do this. I gave up. So full of itself. You have to read like three essays every <laughs> single page. Yeah. It's like, fuck this. I can't do it. And then, yeah. It is like the episode eight of webcomics. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. At least it's not the episode nine. Oh, that's true. But at least episode nine knew how bad it was. No, Did it, it didn't. Yeah. You're a liar. Episode nine knows. It's Somehow a... Palpatine has returned. Yeah. You don't make a good movie with that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> My favorite was someone on 4chan was like, what's your name? Ray. Ray Skywalker. He's like, absolute garbage line. I quit watching it. And you're like, well, yeah, dipshit. That's the last line of the movie. <laughs> That was the last line of the movie? I didn't oh. see nine. I didn't know that was the last line of the fucking movie. Are you kidding me? That's so stupid. This old lady comes up. She's like, the line delivery of the old lady. She's like, who are you? And she's like, Ray. She's like, Ray who? She's like, Ray Skywalker. And then the movie ends. That sucks. Oh, my God. <laughs> that sucks. To be continued, question mark. This old lady, this old lady's so mad about the stranger she's never seen. I feel like uh, that movie was made because they were like, you know, you guys hate the prequels too much. <laughs> but we're having a lot of fun talking about yeah. this. We can let's uh, let's finish up this podcast. So I want to say, Jordan, thank you so much for making the opening and ending theme, being a great host and helping with the editing. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for putting the podcast structure together and doing the editing. And you know what, man? Also being a pretty damn good co-host. Oh, well, thank you. I also want to give props to Mer Lyle for their awesome cover art. You can find her online at Lyle Mer and Nigel for being our generous art benefactor. Thank you, Dylan, for assistance with editing. You can find his podcast, Anime Out of Context, at AnimeOutOfContext.com. Thank you to Tucker and Maxi B for assistance with pronunciation, translation, other miscellaneous research. Tucker, I will happily debate you on your thoughts on episode eight, but I will want to say I don't have these strong feelings. I was just a running joke, so please, <laughs> please don't yell at me. If you really like that movie, I'm not trying to attack your movie opinion. You can find us on Twitter at Shonen Flopcast in our website, shonenflop.com. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcasts. And come join the Shonen Flop Discord. Open to everyone, patron or not. Come hang out with us and talk about anime, games, or whatever else is on your mind. Also, have a monthly movie night. Find a link to it in the show notes or on our site. We are at, I think, almost 500 people, which is absolutely insane. Hell nice. yeah. And if you've been enjoying the podcast and want to help us keep going, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Wouldn't be able to keep running the show without their support. Get a ton of awesome perks like exclusive content. Jordan, what are we releasing this month? Oh, I believe we're releasing our first part of our read-through of Magu-chan. Yes, it is our second long-form review. And Jordan, who is our very special guest on that? Oh, man. Oh, David, we got Sean from Anime Out of Context. Our sister show, some may say. Yeah, our first ever returning guest. Super excited to have him on. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And along with that, you could be listening into this recording or even helping us pick what series we're going to cover next. You can find it at patreon.com slash shonenflop. And speaking of perks, we're going to read off some of our wonderful patrons right now. Starting with our Chainsaw Man patron, we have Rat Murders Elephants and Sean Hates Penguins. What is this world coming to? Whoa. Then moving on down to the Dolphin Dad, we have Dude Man Bro Guy and Tracking Roving Animals for All Loving Girls and Raccoons Wolfwood. Moving on down to the King of the Forest, we have 090Z, Albi, Cram, Xala, Florin. Sorry, uh, please let us know how to properly... It's a, it's 
it's just, I believe it's a Hungarian name. So my apologies that we don't know how to say it right. Darth Pikachu wants a nine koi review. Gabe Lando, Isra Font, Jacob Andrew Galloway, Josh Robinson, Kevin Briggs, Marty, Rachel, my wonderful fiance. She is the best dog mom out there. And I hope she's having a great birthday and enjoying that Lego set I got her. Max Baker, Scarlett Mirmanen, T, The Real Jory, The BB King, BB The, and Trevor Schechner. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, everybody. And also, please check out my art. It's Instagram.com slash Jordan Forbes art. Or maybe check out my website, Jordan Forbes dot art. Check (laughs) out my look. I got to keep it consistent. I like it. That's important. Yeah. No, I've been working on an abstract painting. You can see my other paintings. I work real hard on them. Give me a job as a web developer. Awesome. Yeah. And then all that's left to do is to sign off. Thank you so much for joining us. Tune in next Monday as we give our first thoughts on tricks dedicated to witches. This has been David. This has been Jordan. And this has been Terrence. And you've been listening to Shonen Flop. Keep on flopping, floppers. Yeah. Catholic floppers. <laughs> D-A-E-S-T-O-N-U-N-A. Yeah, bye. <laughs> <laughs>